Now let's consider in detail the uniform resource identifier. The way how the resources in the World Wide Web uh, are identified. The basic components of the World Wide Web are the web documents. Web documents are characterized, also called hypermedia documents, are characterized by the hyperlinks. Hyperlinks provide the possibility to point directly to another document. But what is needed to implement this is that each of the resources which are uh, worldwide distributed may be uniquely identified. And what's needed, and the URIs uh, provide this, is a unique identification scheme uh, which make it possible to identify each resource in the World Wide Web. If we look to our social life, then there are two identification models uh, uh, very popular. The first identification is done by names. Each person has a name and if we talk to each other then we use a name of the other, we can directly uh, identify our partner uh, by his name. So this is uh, very common, it's used all over the world. A little problem is there are many persons with the same name. So the name uh, often does not provide a unique identification. Besides of identifying persons by names, we have the possibility to identify a person by their address. Addresses are uniquely uh, defined. Addresses are given by, uh, in a hierarchical way by uh, defining the country, the city, the street, the number, housing unit of the uh, flat of a person. And when we give uh, his or her address, we can exactly point a resource uh, to this uh, person. In the World Wide Web, the identification scheme of the URIs, the Uniform Resource Identifier, are used. And exactly like in the social life, there are two types of such Uniform Resource Identifiers. There is a possibility to identify the resources, the web resources, by their name. The scheme is the Uniform Resource Name, the URN. Besides of that, there is a possibility to identify resources by their address and this is done by the Uniform Resource Locator. This is uh, based on defining the address of a resource, defining the server where the, uh, the, the resource is stored and then exactly uh, describing the path uh, and the location of the resource at the server. In the practical application in the World Wide Web, the URLs are used. Only a few exceptions uh, where uh, people work with the URN. So for practical application, up to now, the URLs, the Uniform Resource Locators, are established. The advantage is they provide a unique identification. Unique identification by exactly describing the place where the resources uh, is stored. The disadvantage is if uh, the address changes, if the resource is placed on another uh, server or if the uh, website is restructured, then this, the change of the address cannot be carried out automatically. The implementation of the URNs uh, of the uniform resource name has failed until now due to a lack of a universal name service. When we want to uh, access a resource in the World Wide Web, we have to use our browser and the user can access resource in the web via the browser by typing the URI, in most cases typing the URL of the resources, or it's also possible to follow a hyperlink. A hyperlink by activating a special designed element in a text underlined word or an image or a video uh, in the uh, web document which is displayed by the browser and then behind uh, there is an, a link which leads to the uh, which exactly points to the document we want to access. 
as an, another way to, uh, uh, to uh, access a resource in the web, we can work with, for example, the history directory uh, of our browser or with the bookmark directory. This Directories help to make the uh, uh, movement in the World Wide Web more simple. And in all cases, what's done is that a resource is uh, requested by giving its URE in typical way by uh, giving its URL. What is the requirements for such uniform resource identifiers? First requirement is the universality. So we are such a scheme, such an identification scheme uh, in the web, it should be possible to address every available resources in the internet, regardless, uh, what, uh, regardless uh, of the particular information service uh, which is used for that resource. The uh, another requirement for the uniform resource identifier is the uniqueness. The uniqueness, uh, every resource which can be accessed over the uh, web must be uniquely uh, identifiable. Because otherwise the uh, technic does not know which of the different resources with the same name uh, should, be, uh, should be sent to the browser. What is also very important uh, is that such a scheme, the uniform resource identifiers, is extensible. extensible. So also new resources that have not been offered until now should be uh, suitable to be equipped with an identifier. And it should be fixable. What does it mean? Typically, for example, if you have a business card, you want to design also the home page. So a new RE should not only be uh, interchangeable by electronic means, it should also be manually uh, edited. Uh, it should be possible to print it out, for example, for business cards. So these are the requirements for such a uniform resource identifier scheme. Now let's consider the syntax of the URE, of the Uniform Resource Identifier, that are used to identify resources of the World Wide Web. URIs are standardized by the Internet Engineering Task Force and by the uh, uh, Web Consortium. And uh, it is described in the RFC 1630. And the syntax of such an URE looks as follows. There is a prefix, then colon, and then a suffix. In the prefix, the protocol is specified. The protocol or the information service is specified uh, over which this uh, resource can be accessed. And in the suffix, there is the place or uh, the identification specified the resource can be found. In the <coughs> RFC 1630, not only complete URIs are uh, described, but also uh, so-called relative URIs. According to this RFC, URIs is either an URL, which specifies the location of resources, or it is specified by an URN, uh, which gives uh, the name of a resource. 